Okay, well today's video is entitled part one of RL circuits. RL because we have R a resistor and L an inductor. And in this video, I'm going to go over how the voltage and the current change over time when we charge and discharge the inductor. All right, in this video, I'm going to be using one of the excellent interactive simulations from PHET Interactive Simulations. Here's their website. Check it out. They have excellent interactive simulations for both science and math. All right, here's the first circuit we're going to look at. Now, this circuit is not an RL circuit. This is a purely resistive circuit with a 10 ohm resistor and a 25 volt battery. We're going to be looking at this circuit at how the voltage and the current change over time, and then we're going to be comparing that to our RL circuit, which we'll see in just a moment. I'm going to turn the simulation on. I'm going to close the switch, and you'll notice that when I close the switch, the voltage goes to its maximum and the current goes to maximum, and then when I open the switch, the voltage and the current go back to zero. You're supposed to notice that in this circuit, for a resistive circuit, when I close the switch, the current and the voltage go to their maximum, and we have a steady state. And when I open the switch, the current and the voltage go back to zero. The current maximum is 2.5 amperes because we have a 25 volt battery and 10 ohm resistor. Ohm's law of equals I times R. The current, therefore, is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance, 2.5 amperes. Here we have only one device, a resistor, and therefore immediately all of the voltage is across that one device, 25 volts, 25 volts across the resistor. Now let's compare that to our RL circuit, which we have hopefully right here. Here's our RL circuit. Looks a little complicated with everything we have here, but we have a 10 ohm resistor, that's our R, a 12, ohm, 12 Henry inductor, that's our L. We have a switch, and again, we have our 25 volt battery. This is the branch through which we're going to be charging the inductor. As we charge the inductor, we're going to be building up the electric, excuse me, the magnetic field within the inductor. And then we'll be storing energy in that magnetic field. And then we're going to discharge the energy that we've stored through this 10 ohm resistor, which happens to be a light bulb. And before I turn the simulation on and shut the switch, let's just review what an inductor is. An inductor is, of course, just a coil of wire. Here's our coil of wire. It looks like a copper coil of wire, of wire. And it is a device that tries to keep the current through it from changing. It does not like it when the current is changing. So whether we're starting at zero current and increasing the current, or we already have some steady state current and we're de decreasing the current possibly back to zero, the inductor does not like that. The inductor is happiest when there's a current, excuse me, a steady current flowing through the coil of wire that makes up that inductor. But of course, sometimes the current does change. And if the current changes, then the coil itself will induce a voltage across itself to try to keep the current from changing. So the coil induces a voltage across itself. And because it does that to itself, across itself, we call that, that's right, self-induction. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn simulation on close switch and we're going to see how the current and the voltage graphs look like we have the voltage across the resistor, the current through this branch of the circuit, and the voltage across the inductor. So simulation on, close switch, and you'll notice that the graphs for the voltage and the current look a little different. I'm going to let them run for a second, and then we'll turn that off. And then you'll notice that the current through the circuit, the current increases exponentially over time, the voltage increases exponentially time, the voltage across the resistor, that is, and the voltage across the inductor goes from 0 to 25 and then decreases exponentially over time. Now, why is it that the current and the voltage across the resistor don't go to their maximum values immediately and then go to steady state? The voltage does not go to its maximum and then go to steady state. The current and the voltage both increase exponentially over time, and that is, of course, now because we have our inductor in the circuit. As we said earlier, the inductor does not like it when the current is changing. We went from zero, we increased the current, the inductor doesn't like that. The inductor wants to keep the current from changing. It is happiest when there's a steady state current. Well, I like to think of it as kind of a battle between the battery and the inductor. The battery is trying to increase the current, the inductor is trying to keep the current from increasing. But you'll notice that eventually the current approaches its maximum value of two and a half amperes. 25 volts, 10 ohms, two and a half amperes. And the voltage therefore also increases 
as it approaches its maximum value of 25 volts because we have a 25 volt battery here. All right, so that happens because we have the inductor. Now the inductor can't keep the current from changing forever. It can really only delay that change in current. And we see that delay here in this exponential curve. Now let's look at these three graphs in a little more detail. So first we're gonna start off by looking at it at time zero, what's going on at time zero. Time zero is when we just closed the switch right after the switch is closed. Well, right after the switch is closed, if we look at our graph, there is no current flowing through the circuit. Well, if there's no current flowing through the circuit, then there's no current through the resistor and there's no voltage across the resistor. And we can see that right here, V equals I times R. The current and the voltage are directly proportional to each other. Well, if there's no current and there's no voltage, well, the switch is closed and we have a 25 volt battery. There's no voltage across the resistor. Well, where's all that resistance? Excuse me, where's all that voltage? All that voltage is, you can see right here across the inductor. When there's 25 volts across the inductor, you can see we have a 25 volt battery. So that's at time zero. Zero current, zero voltage, maximum voltage, 25. Well, over time, the current increases. Well, if the current is increasing here, then the current's increasing through the resistor, and that means the voltage across the resistor is gonna be increasing. These two curves have the same shape because they're directly related to each other, directly proportional to each other. Well, I like to think of it, well, if the voltage is increasing here and it's increasing to 25, and all we have is two devices, a resistor and an inductor, the sum of those two at any time have to be equal to the voltage across the battery. So if the voltage is increasing here, then the voltage has to be decreasing here. All right, so we have increasing current, increasing voltage, and then a corresponding decreasing voltage across the inductor. When we reach our steady state current, at some point we have our maximum current of two and a half, our maximum voltage of 25, zero voltage, that means, well, the way I think of it is that really, the inductor is no longer playing a part in the circuit. And really this branch then just becomes a short or the inductor just acts like a plain old wire. There's no more voltage across the inductor. We've reached a steady state. So I'm just gonna turn this on for a second or two more and you'll see the current reaches a steady state, the voltage across the resistor reaches a steady state and the voltage across the inductor goes back to zero. All right. Now, what we're gonna do next is we've stored all that energy, well, we've stored all the energy in the magnetic field in that inductor. We're gonna now going to release that energy through this resistor over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the simulation on, close this switch, which gives the inductor access to this bulb, and we're gonna open this switch. When we open this switch, the current's gonna go back to zero, and that's gonna be the same current that flows through here. Well, the inductor, once again, doesn't want the current to go back to zero, so it's going to delay that by releasing its energy through this bulb. All right, we'll see how the current curve looks. So we're going to turn the simulation on. We have our steady state current, 2.5 amperes right through here. We're going to close this switch. We're going to open this switch. And right away, you'll see the bulb goes on, and the current starts to decrease exponentially back to zero and let this run we get it right about there and you can see as I said the current which was two and a half amperes here and it's going to start flowing through here immediately and then it immediately starts to decay exponentially back to zero and why is it decaying well it's decaying because all the energy that was stored here is being used to light this bulb and produce light and heat well it doesn't go immediately back to zero because the inductor is trying to delay, or the inductor does delay that decrease back to zero. But you can see eventually it comes back to zero, and that means that all of the energy that was stored in the magnetic field inside that inductor has been used by that bulb to produce light and heat. And you can see we had 25 volts again back across the inductor opposite polarity because we had two and a half amperes of current through this branch which immediately went through this branch, and we have a 10 ohm resistor. And by Ohm's law of equals I times R, 2.5 amps of current, 10 ohm resistor equals 25 volts. All right, so there you go. I think we did everything we wanted to do in that video. 
we looked at first the resistive circuit, so we could compare it to our RL circuit. We looked at the curves, the current and the voltage for charging the inductor. And then we looked at the curves, the current and the voltage for discharging the inductor. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, you can link up in the upper right hand corner to part two, where we kind of review what we saw in this video and we'll look a little more closely at the graphs of the current and the voltage. And if you enjoy this video, please subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Subscribe to my channel and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much.